Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Salam Khan here. And today we start the new topic: encoders and decoders. All right. Uh, so let us begin. Encoders and decoders. We are doing it together because they are interrelated. All right. They would be easier to understand once you do it together. Encoders and decoders. All right. So now, what do they mean? What are they? So as it is clear from the name, encoders does what? It encodes. And a decoder does what? It decodes. All right. That's a simple definition to understand. Okay. These are what? These are combinational circuits. Combinational circuits. And you know what combinational circuits mean. They have many inputs and many outputs. And many outputs. And by these many, I do not mean a lot. I mean more than one. Alright. Now what are these encoders and what are these decoders? Alright. So let's say we, we, we understand both of them together, all right? So let's say this is an encoder. This is an encoder. And let's say this is the decoder. So what do we have for encoders? We have N cross M input lines. N cross M. No, sorry, not input lines. We have N input lines and we have M output lines. And similarly for the decoder, we have the opposite, which means we have M input lines and we have N output lines. Now, what does that mean? So, let's say your N uh, is 4, all right? Let's say N is 4. So, we have 4 cross what would be M? So we have the formula n is equal to uh, 2 to the power m. You know that from the basics. So m would be uh, log to the base 2 of n. All right. And similarly over here we will have n is equal to log to the base 2 of m. All right. Uh, no, no. Uh, over here, sorry. Over here we have again the same because here we are opposite. Okay. So we have m is equal to 2 to the power n in this case. We have m is equal to uh, 2 to the power n, or n would be equal to log to the base 2 of m. So let's say we're here if we have four input lines, all right? Here are the four input lines. Let's say 1, 2, 3, and 4. So how many output lines do we need? So m is equal to log to the base 2. Of 4, I can write it 2 to the power 2, which means I can write it as 2 log 2 of 2. And log 2 of 2 would be 1, you know that from the basics, which means the number of output lines would be 2 in this case. So these are 2 output lines. Which means that this is a 4 cross 2 encoder. Alright, now for the, for, the, for the decoder that we need, it, it, the inputs will be 4, which means the output of the encoder will be an input to the next decoder. All right, which means the input uh, uh, now over here we have, uh, sorry, the M is 2. And N is again the same thing. N is 4, all right. And I wrote it wrong over here. We have N is equal to uh, 2 to the power M. Here I wrote wrong. We have n is equal to 2 to the power m, okay? n is equal to 2 to the power m. The same as this, okay? The same. All right. Now what do you do? Uh, so, so over here we have these two input lines. Let me show you over here. And over here we have these four output lines. Is that fine? Okay, now, so, so now let me name them for you. Let's say, let's say we have uh, uh, I0, I1, I2, and I3. Now the outputs would be what? The output would be O1 and O2, let's say. 
which are now acting as an inputs to here i1 and i2 and now we have the outputs o1 o2 o3 and o4 and they are connected then all right the output of one encoder is connected to the input of the next decoder all right now what is uh, the use of these encoders and decoders all right so these encoders basically are used to minimize the number of data lines this is the most significant use all right encoders are used to minimize the number of data lines and another use is to implement boolean function they help in implementation of boolean functions all right they make it easy we see the second uh, uh, use in the upcoming lectures now we discuss the first one okay so how do they minimize the number of data lines so we see Let's say over here we have these four income, uh, uh, incoming lines, all right? Now, let's say if one of them is high, let's say this I2 is high, okay? This I2 is high. So what do you do? The rest of them are low, so we don't require them, all right? So if you don't require them, so we can neglect them. Now, you know, this two uh, stands for what? It stands for a one zero. For in the binary, this uh, uh, it's a one zero, okay? If they if it's a zero zero eight hour here, it's a zero one for a one, a one zero for i two, and a one one for i three. Now, if I need this i two, so what do I do? This encoder does what? This encoder gives this o one a one and this o two a zero, which means this i two has been passed on to the output of this particular encoder and the i0, i1 and i3 are left over here because they were not supposed to be. We did not need them. What do we have to do with that low state? We had data at this i2. So they are connected over here. Now what does the decoder do? Now this encoded information, this i0 comes uh, to this, uh, this i2 comes to this decoder, this 1 and this 0, okay? What does it do now? Now it checks. I, it's again the equivalent for what? For uh, uh, for output two. Or here I wrote them wrong. Okay. Uh, this is uh, output uh, zero, one, two, and three. All right. So now it does what? The one zero is coming. So it will uh, put it to this data line, which means this uh, output number two would be high, and now uh, the rest of them would be zeros so which means we took care of these one two three input lines over here and one two three output lines over here so we still not sell a total of six lines all right four input lines were coming we needed one of them we directed it to two input lines two output lines of one encoder and two input lines of the next decoder and then we got it through a single uh, output line of the decoder so this is the basics of the encoder and decoder all right similarly we can have a uh, we can have a higher order decoder let's say we have an eight input decoder okay uh, let's say this a if if eight is the input so it would have three output lines all right so i not i1 i2 i3 i4 i5 i6 and i7 and we have three outputs all right so let me write them down also i not i1 i2 i3 i4 5 6 and 7 all right and now you have over here output 1 output 2 output 3 of the encoders now this is an 8 cross 3 encoder all right now this will we will have an information encoded over here now at the output the information that we get we don't know what it is all right so for that we need to decode that information and for, for for that decoding we will require a decoder which means now we require an 8 cross 3 
decoder over here, all right? Uh, sorry, 3 cross 8. 8 cross 3 is the encoder. So we have a 3 cross 8 decoder and these are connected over here. These outputs, which means that this is I1, I2 and I3. And we have 8 outputs. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7, all right? 07, 06, 05, 04, 03. 02, 01, and 0 0.0. Let's say we have an example. Let's say this I5 is high, okay? This I5 is high, and I5 stands for 101. Oh, this is the binary equivalent. So, what does this encoder do? This only connects this I5, all right? Which means it gives this 01 a 1, 02 a 0, and 03 a 1. And the rest of them are low, so we don't require them. And now, similarly, we're here, the decoder checks for it. The decoder checks for the 101, the binary equivalent, and it sees that it is the equivalent for 5, so it sets the 05 as high, and the data has been transmitted. Now a question arises, what if, what if, I5 is high, and we have an I4 high? If two of them are high. So that's a question, alright? And for that, you don't need to get confused, if uh, a number of inputs are high, so what to do in that case? For that we have the types of encoder. The first type, that is the priority encoder, which we see in the next lecture, all right? We have a total of four types, which we'll be, con which we'll be covering in an upcoming lecture, uh, inshallah. So, see you very soon. Till then, take care. Goodbye.